everyone, it's Monica, and today I am here to do a very exciting video. I'm doing my first book haul in a little while, and I have so many books to haul. I think this might be my biggest book haul ever, if not at least one of my biggest book hauls of like all time. And I'm really excited to jump in to all of these. So in this haul, I do have some of the Book of the Month Club picks for the past two months because it's been a little while since my last book haul. And instead of walking through every single book, because that would be 10 books, I've narrowed it down to my top picks from each month, this month and last month. So I'm going to talk about those two. Maybe we'll do those first. We'll do those first. These are the six book of the month club picks that are my favorite for the past two months. The first one on top, I was so excited when I saw that this was one of the picks. And it is Circe. Circe? Someone told me in my most anticipated video how this is pronounced, but I don't remember. But it's by Madeline Miller, who wrote The Sign of Achilles, which I know a lot of people have read and loved. I haven't read it yet. This one sounds so good. Basically this is about Circe who is a daughter of a titan and she ends up turning to humans for um, companionship and she discovers that she has the power of witchcraft and Zeus being threatened by her ends up isolating her to a de deserted island and this is her story and it sounds so good. I'm so excited for a story about gods and witchcraft and anger and politics. It just sounds amazing. So yeah I'm really I'm so excited when this was in the box. Then one of my favorite things about book of the month is that I always discover some really interesting new books that I would not have discovered otherwise. One of them is The Oracle Year by Charles Soule and again this is one of this month's picks so if you get book of the month club this month you can pick one of these first three books if you are so inclined. This one is about a guy who having all these predictions all at once like I think it's like 168 or something like that. He ends up setting up a website where he puts out these predictions and it's about like basically people in power trying to figure out who he is and shut him down and like the enemies that he creates and the things that he's able to predict and how it changes the world. So this one sounds super interesting. I feel like there's probably going to be a lot of like tech data discussion in here. This next one is another one that I hadn't heard of yet, but it sounds absolutely brilliant. And that is The Girl Who Smiled Beads, A Story of War and What Comes After by Clementine Wamaria. So this is the story of Clementine who at the age of six years old fled with her family from the Rwandan massacre. She ended up coming to the US to Chicago and it's about her life growing up after that. And it just sounds brilliant and amazing and I didn't know that this book was being published. I knew nothing about it so I'm really really excited that it was in this month's box. And I know a lot of you will probably find this one really interesting too so I'm excited to read it. Also pretty short so if you're looking for a short book. I always like to let people know that because I know that sometimes people like specifically seek out short books. That makes sense. Now I'm going into last month's picks which I think you can still get but it'll be like an add-on to this month's box but don't quote me on that. Um, so the one that I was most excited about getting in last month's pick was The Astonishing Color of After by Emily X. R. Pan. This is again one of my most anticipated books of the entire year. Everyone I, know, everyone I know who has read this one has absolutely raved about it, said it's been so good. This is about a young girl named Lee who is half Asian and half white and her family is from Taiwan and her mother at the beginning of the story ends up committing suicide and she becomes convinced that her mother has turned into this bird. So she goes on this sort of pilgrimage to Taiwan to just sort of understand her mother's upbringing and her, her own history and figure out the sort of mystery about this bird and, and what might be going on. There might be some like magical realism elements in this, I'm not 100% sure, but it sounds absolutely stunning. And I actually saw Emily XR Pan speak on a an Asians in YA panel recently, and she was just so brilliant and said so many things that really hit home for me with like my own mom and my own family. So I'm really, really excited to pick this one up. Next I have Rainbirds by Clarissa Go Nawin. And this one is just such a pretty cover. Um, this one actually wasn't on my radar until someone actually recommended that I read this one um, in the comments of one of my videos. So this is set outside of Tokyo and it follows a young man who is trying to sort of piece together his sister's life who has committed suicide um, and he's trying to like sort of infiltrate or not infiltrate but like 
just go through her life to figure out what happened and, and, and how she ended up where she did. And then lastly, I have the last equation of Isaac Severy. I think this was in my most anticipated non-YA video. If it wasn't, it was like in a list to potentially be added to that. Um, but basically, this is a literary thriller. And Isaac Severy is this sort of really famous mathematician. He leaves the, his like final equation to his granddaughter to like decipher and figure out. But she is not an amazing mathematician and so she ends up having to like get different people to help her figure out what her grandfather was trying to say and I'm just like super intrigued by this one I am such an anti-math person like not that I'm like against math being used <laughs> obviously but like I am so bad at math but there's something like weirdly beautiful about math too if that makes sense so I'm very I am really intrigued to see like how it is depicted and dealt with in this book, especially as someone who like struggles with numbers so much. Next I have a few books that I have recently purchased. The first one is Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. It is apparently now a major motion picture, which I did not realize. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what this book is about. I bought it because I've wanted to read a Brian Selznick book for ages, especially now that he's doing his versions of Harry Potter. This one, it's basically told half through fo like drawn illustrations and half via text. Just like the storytelling factor alone sounds super interesting for this one and is why I picked it up. So I'm very excited to finally read my first Brian Zelznick book. Everyone I was with really liked this one so I'm, I'm very excited for my pick. Next I have The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang and this one I picked up I think it was Kristen who had read it or maybe it was Emma who had read it. I was at the Amazon bookstore with a few friends. A couple of them had like talked about this book and it sounded really interesting. Also the illustrations were like, I just loved all like the vibrancy of them. Um, but basically it's about this prince who likes to wear dresses and then his dressmaker who makes the dresses and about their relationship. And I don't know, it just sounds really cute and the illustrations look really pretty. So I was sold. Then I picked up Nice Try Jane Sinner by Leanne Oelk. And I picked this one up because two of my friends, Kat and Emma had read it and just raved about it nonstop. They loved it. And if both of them loved it, I figured I'd probably love it too. And then I also wanted to use it for my most recent Try a Chapter video. So I got this one, I started it, I really, really like it. I still have to finish it, but it's so good. It's about Jane Sinner who has like been forced to drop out of high school. I, I'm not sure why just yet, um, but she ends up enrolling in community college. And while she's there, she gets involved with this sort of like local college run reality TV show in order to win this like used car and then from my understanding it kind of goes a little viral and she becomes like locally famous and I'm very intrigued to see like just how that plays out because that I feel like local fame is like a very interesting different kind of fame and I'm really intrigued to see just how that's um, portrayed in this. Next I have one of my most anticipated books of the year and that is The Way You Make Me Feel by Maureen Gu. This one comes out May 2018. I was sent this because I requested it and I am so excited. Uh, I believe in a thing called Love by Morin Gu. It was one of my favorite books of last year that I read. It was just so, so much fun. This is about a 16-year-old girl, Clara Shin, who ends up having to work for the summer at her father's Korean food truck. And it's a YA contemporary, so I'm assuming there's some romance in there. And I'm just really excited for like a fluffy YA contemporary, but like with Korean characters. I'm really excited for that. So that's, I mean, that's what I loved so much about I Believe in a Thing Called Love. Then I was sent by Sourcebooks Furyborn by Claire Legrand. This one I've been seeing make the rounds for a little while now. It sounds really interesting and it had a blurb from Kendar Blake about Three Dark Crowns. So I was sold by that because I love Three Dark Crowns so much. Um, but basically this is about two queens who are separated by time. And from my understanding, you follow both of their stories. One, like, and I think you don't know which one is the good queen and the bad queen, but one is like the sun queen, one is the blood queen. And you basically have to go through all these trials to prove if you end up having these certain powers that you are not the blood queen and you are in fact the sun queen. And so I believe this is about both of their stories sort of told simultaneously in parallel, but like 
thousands of years apart. Yeah, a thousand years apart. So I'm really intrigued by that because I love stories that like play with time in that way. And also I love stories that have queens with powers. Next book I requested from Penguin and it is Royals by Rachel Hawkins. This just gives me major like Meg Cabot, Princess Diaries slash the Royal We vibes. Really excited for it. Uh, this is about a girl whose sister ends up becoming engaged to the crown prince of Scotland. And Daisy, the sister, not the person getting engaged, is like not really excited about it. She did not really want this whole like life in the public. Um, but then she ends up meeting the prince's younger brother, who I believe is a bit roguish and adventure ensues. I don't know, it just sounds fluffy and fun and right up my alley, especially this time of year. I feel like I'll really fly through it. Also, the box for this was really fun. They have like a like invitation to the royal wedding in it and all this stuff. It was a good job. Good job, Penguin. All right, I'm actually going to do a quick Page Habit unboxing because I am actually gonna be giving away this box. This one came in the mail recently and I really like the box and I especially love the book that's in it uh, but I've already read it and I want more people to read it because I think that it's such a powerful book. This is going to be a US only giveaway but I will have information in the description box below if you are interested in learning more and winning this box. So anyways inside of it this month and this was this month's page habit box you've got some leather like stickers that you can apply to things you've got one of those like sorry if we have just moved a bit my battery died but anyways as i was saying also comes with this really cute photo hanging cord which i think a lot of people would like a letter from the author a coloring book note card thing you have information about where proceeds or some of the proceeds from this month's box is going so march donations went to kenya and it tells you a little bit about the location and why uh page habit is sending boxes i mean books there um you have a pretty bookmark a short story and then the book itself is one that I've recently read and absolutely loved, and it is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. And again, one of the things that's really cool about Page Habit is that you can go through and you get like these post-it notes that tell you, that are from the author, and they tell you a little bit about um, their process when writing the book or some insider information about that section. Um, this story is told in verse. It's amazing. I loved reading it. So I'm really excited to pass it along, share it with some of you guys, and hopefully one of you will win this and you'll really enjoy it. So yeah, um, I'll, again, I'll have information on how to win that in the description box below if you are interested. I also have the page have a quarterly box. This is not sponsored. They are really kind and they um, sent me both of these boxes for free. But um, just sort of a mid mid haul break for some unboxings. I don't like doing standalone unboxings that much anymore. So doing it in here. So again, it tells you about where they donated books. So the quarterly box was being donated to Ghana and this is from January. I'm a little bit behind on unboxings. I recognize that. We got this really cool, like one of these like, I don't know what these are called, like these like specific style of keychains. So if anyone knows, can you let me know? I don't know. But it says follow the stars, which I think is really cool. That's going to go on my keychain for sure. Then we have this really pretty notebook. The Unemployed Philosophers Guild is the company that it's from, but it has, oh my gosh, it has like the phases of the moon and it's just like a really cute like pocket diary. This is from Out of Print, which I love anything from Out of Print, and it's this really cute composition book, like notebook looking pouch. I love that. That's definitely going to come in handy. So I, yeah, really big fan of that. As this is the quarterly, you do get three books as opposed to just one. Um, first we have the bookmark. They always do these like really cute illustrated bookmarks. This one is perfect for me. It's Harry Potter and it is, it is our choices that show what we truly are far more than our abilities, JK Rowling. And it has this really cute illustration of Harry Potter sitting on some books. The book pick for this month um, is Unearthed. By Amy Kaufman and Meg Spooner so they were like the curators for this month for some reason it gives me like Tomb Raider vibes I don't know why but 
I'm really, really intrigued for this one. Also, this cover, I just noticed that, like, all these lines, you're probably not going to be able to see it from, like, here, but they're, like, holographic, so it's just, like, very cool to look at. Really into that. So the other two books that they included in here that have been, like, curated by the authors, the first one is called The Cage by Megan Shepard, who wrote uh, The Madman's Daughter. So there's that one. And then there is Starflight by Melissa Landers. This is another sort of sci-fi space book. And then The Cage. So like The Cage is about all these teens who like wake up in this desert and they're being watched by like black windows. And they're like trying to figure out what's going on. So that sounds interesting. But yeah, both of these. Very excited. So that is the Page Habit quarterly box from this past quarter. And then maybe in like a year I'll do the next quarterly box unboxing. Got a few more books that I've recently purchased. The first one is The Witches of New York which is set in the 1800s and it follows all these different women who end up performing different forms of like witchcraft and it gives me kind of diviners vibes from the synopsis. So at this tea shop called Tea and Symphony, uh, Adelaide, Tom, and Eleanor St. Clair provide a place for whispered conf confessions, secret cures, and spiritual assignations for a select society of ladies who speak the right words and ask the right questions. This is about 17-year-old Beatrice who ends up getting a job at this tea shop and about her sort of like becoming part of this world and it just sounds so good and I, I picked this one up at Blue Stockings bookstore here in New York City which is a feminist bookstore and they curate all of their books to basically be progressive and feminist so that sort of made me even more excited to pick this one up so yeah it just sounds amazing and I hadn't heard of it until I saw it like the cover and was like intrigued by its title. The other book that I picked up from Blue Stockings is The Girl from the Other Side which when I posted this on my Instagram story, I've never gotten so many replies uh, of people just like being like, that's amazing, it's so good, like good choice. So I'm really excited for this one. It is about, um, on the back it says, once upon a time in a land far away, there were two kingdoms, the outside where twisted beasts roamed that could curse with a touch, and the inside where humans lived in safety and peace. The girl and the beast should never have met, but when they do, a quiet fairy tale begins. This is a story of two people, one human, one inhuman, who linger in the hazy twilight that separates night from day. And this is a manga. I was with my friends Emma and Elena, and we all picked this book up, so I'm really excited to read it and to be able to discuss it with them. I've started it, I read the first chapter, and it just very lovely. Then from Harper I was sent Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This is a zombie book that I believe takes place during the Civil War and in the author's note it was really interesting. She talked about how Pride and Prejudice and Zombies was actually a big inspiration for this because while she was watching it she thought like if this actually had happened like these women, these like white ladies probably wouldn't actually be fighting the zombies themselves. They'd probably have people of color, especially black people, doing it for them. And this is sort of the story that came out of that idea. So I'm really, really intrigued about that. It takes place during the Civil War in America. And I'm usually not a zombie person, but this just sounds so good. Then I worked with Penguin for the release of I Have Lost My Way by Gail Foreman, which I'm so excited for. I'm actually really sad because I missed the launch party in New York and I wanted to go, especially because my queen, Luba Bray, was going to be there. But regardless, um, I Have Lost My Way. I did a whole video about it, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. But it came with this really cute journal called Pour Your Heart Out a journal to inspire your thoughts and dreams and it has just like a ton of quotes by Gail Foreman um, and I actually want to do a giveaway for this one too because I'm gonna be honest I love this it's absolutely beautiful but I am so bad at filling out journals I have so many journals and I know that there are other big Gail Foreman fans out there so I will have another link in the description box if you would like to win this notebook um, I'll have that below so I could pass this along to someone who might love it and get even more use out of it than I would. Um, then I was sent from McEldery Books. Uh, this is I Have the Right to a High School Survivor's Story of Sexual Assault, Justice, and Hope. So this is a memoir by Chessie Prout who was raped in high school and her community just like very much so did not rally around her and um, basically shamed her and victim blamed her and she ended up creating this movement around the hashtag I have the right to and I am really excited that it is an act like that that 
we have a teen being able to tell her own story. I think that's really important. So I was really excited when I got sent this one in the mail. And then I think this next book is the last book I'm going to be talking about, and it is Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Chui. I also worked with Simon & Schuster on a recent video about this book. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year. Um, basically, I've been told that this has like kind of Eleanor and Park vibes. I've watched some interviews with the author, and I just find her really interesting as a person especially when it comes to like what she has to say, say about like Asian representation in media and all of that so I'm really intrigued for this one. Um, it follows two teens who are older I think they're like 1920. Penny has left home to start college and she's like her whole high school life was just sort of like uneventful um, and then you have Sam who is just literally stuck. He wants to be a famous filmmaker someday but he is currently living and sleeping in this cafe and um, it's about their story when they meet for the first time end up exchanging numbers and become sort of like texting friends and they just sort of like pour their hearts out via text and I'm really also very intrigued for how that is handled because I think that that is such a relevant topic to today and something I think a lot of people can relate to but not something that's like very well depicted in media just yet so I'm, I'm really intrigued for how like that part of technology will be shown in this book so yes those are all of the books I recently hauled got through them all thank you so much for watching Links to all the giveaways in the description box below. If there are any books in here that you particularly are interested in hearing more about in a future like wrap up or anything, let me know. And I'll talk to y'all next time. Bye!